Greetings all, it's the Devious Monkey here. Yes, it's been two weeks. I have been unbelievably busy with my day job. I'm not gonna say that I'm completely caught up because underneath this stack of stuff on the table here, that's four weeks worth of expense reports that I need to do today. So I got that, I got a bunch of other shit I gotta do. I gotta go out this week. I'm going down to Cape Fear on Tuesday, spending the night, working my way back, a couple more days of meetings, and then all of next week I'm not going out, and I plan on using the next two weeks as the absolute catch-up time where I will be, in my mind anyways, 100% caught up after this whole fiasco, company realigning, new routes and all that kind of stuff. I'll have that all down, done, dirty, ready to go, and I can go into the next quarter where I should be, in my own mind, ready, and yeah. And in the meantime, I've been you know, waiting to tie up loose ends with all my gear and all my filming and, and photography stuff, and I will say this. As of right now, I'm still not caught up because I did buy something else. I'll tell you that in a minute. But for now, resolution with Adorama. Those schmucks finally I had them cancel the Rode Wireless Go 2 because it said back order and I was like, screw it, just give me the money. After several more calls and a couple more nasty emails, they finally second day aired me a check for all of the money that they owed me. My account with them is now settled. I have my 20 millimeter lens, my money, they have all my APS-C gear and I am done with them. I do not recommend working with Adorama. They are a bunch of shysters and I had to fight them every step of the way, multiple times, multiple people, and they were just, it seemed like they were just constantly, constantly trying to wear me down to take advantage of me. I'm done with them. I will never give them another penny and I will never ever recommend them to anyone. And I'm done with them and I'm never gonna mention it again. All right, that being said, I did get a couple things in the mail that I've been waiting for one of them and I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna show you my setups the way that I have them set up to use and we're gonna start with finally the a7c setup so here you can see I have my a7c it's in for now it's in this Yulanzi cage but I did order another cage that is a little bit smaller lighter tighter to the camera and also still has the Ari holes on the top for this handle. Pretty much similar, you're not gonna be able to tell much except for you know where it says down here, Yonzi. New cage, but whatever. Sony a7C, pretty much always gonna have this 20 millimeter, the Sony 20 millimeter f1.8, or the Sony 16 to 35 f4. The small rig handle, I tried to take this out of the cage without the handle, all that kind of stuff. And while it was markedly lighter, because I think I weighed out, the cage and the handle were 365 grams. So, uh, yeah, they're heavy. <laughs> I mean, they're just as heavy as, as a, a lens or, or whatever. Now, this Mantis pod is also 326 grams. So I did finally get the Mantis pod. And I have shot a couple videos about it, but never posted them because I just haven't had time. So I'll just tell you right now, this thing is worth every penny, this Mantis Pod Pro. This ball head that comes with the Pro version is so simple to use and it's so sturdy and everything. The Mantis Pod, again, it, it, it almost feels kind of plasticky, but it isn't. It's just really awesome and it, and it I mean, perfect grip. It works well on my hand. It's not slippery as shit. I haven't had to add anything to it. And I'm using their plate instead of the Peak Design plate. It's all the same shape. It just has that special washer in it that keeps it from spinning, which I've never really had a problem with, but I thought, eh, whatever, I'll just stick it on there. So this thing works great. It, it is perfect. And you know you can, you can set this thing up to sit in a number of different ways. There's no point in me going over it. Everybody's already cooed over it. It is incredible and again worth every penny. I highly recommend that you get yourself one. And I am continuing to use the Sennheiser MKE 400, which has been a fantastic microphone for me and will continue to be a fantastic microphone that will probably stay on that setup. I may occasionally swap it out for the Rode Wireless Go. That, I did get shipping notification that it had shipped back to me, but I don't know what they did. 
They haven't told me anything. I don't know if they replaced the battery. I don't know if they gave me two new units. I don't know if they telling me to go pound salt. There's nothing wrong with them. I'm stuck with it. Whatever. I'll get it when I get it. Now, what I have done and what you're seeing now is I have now decided that I'm going to use the ZV-1 as my studio cam rather than constantly taking this thing apart and sliding it into the thing that I jury-rigged with the old A6600 cage and just having weird shit all over the place. It just bothered me and yesterday or last night I kind of had this like epiphany of, of a vision of how I could get this set up and then that's what I've just been doing all afternoon so for the past hour and a half. I've completely broken this down and rebuilt it in order to work with the ZV-1 and I think it looks fantastic. I mean, I'm, I'm looking slightly above now because I have this mounted so much better and also the screen works. So I have it mounted exactly the way that I like it to be. Now I'm using the Movo VXR10 microphone and it is literally mounted on the jury rig piece that I use to mount the camera, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, the Movo VXR10 is literally right in front of me and right underneath the lens and the Ninja is right above the camera. So it it's like perfect. Everything works out perfectly. I was able to mount the handle that I have one of the aperture lights on to the cage that I use for the ZV-1 and then nothing else changed here. I got these two lights going and I, for shits and giggles I changed my background lights to blue, like a cobalt blue. All that's run now. It's all plugged in to the same single power source so everything works. Everything's running off of power. So I have all the power running through that Indie Pro gear that I had built this center rig out for and everything is perfect. So I am going to use this ZV-1 as a studio cam and I think it works perfectly. Then I decided that I liked the ZV-1 as a take around and with the active steady shot and all that kind of stuff. And remember I had it on this power, Ulan-Z power grip with the Ulanzi ball head and all that kind of stuff. And I thought, you know what? I gotta get another one. I got another one. It's an open box in perfect brand new condition. So it says from Best Buy. And it was over $250 off because I actually had some rewards points that I could use. So by the time all was said and done, I, I got, uh, I'm gonna say a pretty much a brand new ZV-1 for $250 off and yeah, hell yeah. So I will get that on Tuesday and then I'm gonna set that up without the big wide angle lens and all that kind of stuff. I might actually keep it as a pocket camera and then for emergencies I can hold it out and, and use it for vlogging or stick it back on here or wherever I wanna mount it because it'll have a peak design plate on it. I am not going to use uh, a big cage. Let's hear it for the magic drawers. Remember, I had that UU rig um, little plate that goes at the bottom just so that I can mount it under there, get to the battery door and the memory card door, but I can still have the plate mounted in the center and not like mess with the door because it was shitty design. I also do have one of these mag filters that I never used that will allow me to, if I want to, put the Zome wide angle lens on. I'm going to have that capability just like it is on here but I don't necessarily know that I'm going to keep this on there all the time because it will not be like a main vlogging cam. It might actually function more in the Forerunner when I need to do stuff. And, you know, we all know that the microphone, the in internal microphone sounds great. Now, the next thing I did was that for the time being, I switched this thing up, this Ulanzi rig, and I have it all set up for the Insta360. The Insta360, I think, is, is more of a walk around vlogging camera for me. You cannot beat the stabilization of this camera. It's amazing. Now the only thing is, is I don't have control over the colors and this, that, and the other thing as, as well as the other cameras, but who gives a shit? It's just when I'm walking around and, and blathering on, so I'm not too worried about that. Then, since I got the Mantis Pod and that will work with the A7C, I have taken the Ulanzi carbon fiber tripod with the Ulanzi head and my small rig mount for a phone and I now have, oh, check it out, neat, the reflection. Uh, I now have my iPhone 12 Pro Max with the capability of using this to film with so that I can, you know, walk around and it's 
like just it's almost like a feather it's so light with this carbon fiber and i think this is more designed for something like this than for walking around with the a7c i know carbon fiber is tough and this is built really well but it always was just a made me very leery of holding you know that five thousand dollar setup you know on on these little legs but i'm not knocking them they're fantastic but i think they're more geared for this so now i can do a lot more when i'm on the road or just walking around in general or if i want to film stuff or i want to film the camera that i'm talking about without having to take shit apart and all that kind of stuff i can just throw it on the iphone 12. this also may be my solution for when i'm on the road and I want to just throw up a quick video while I'm on the road with my 2021 M1 12.9 iPad Pro. That's a, that's a mouthful. With the newest big ass iPad. And by filming on this, it will go directly to my photo stream and I can just, you know, literally maneuver that into LumaFusion and record, or I mean, uh, and edit. So that'd be really cool. So you can see lots of changes have been happening here, but you know me, I'm constantly recrafting my world just to try to make things easier or better or funner or just for the hell of it. I don't need to show you the a7r4. It's the a7r4. It's always going to have the grip on it and right now I have the Sigma 85 millimeter 1.4 on it just because that's what I felt like shooting with for one day and that's it. Again another ZV-1 should be here on Tuesday so I'll be out of town so I'll get it Wednesday. I have a second different cage that I hope is lighter and works a little bit better on the a7c I already found the screen protector for the ZV-1 and this was the second kind that I bought that goes on the screen that should not be bothered by polarized lenses Although I did get new prescription sunglasses without polarization just so that I could use them on shit like that and still be able to see. Again, been very busy with day job work and I just gave myself the permission to not have to worry about shooting, editing, and posting videos at all during that two weeks. I did go through and I have filmed almost every day and I've done stuff and I've even pulled it off and started putting it together and then realized that I was procrastinating and that I needed to get my day job shit done. So that's what you get. I did promise that I was going to show everybody all these different little setups I got going on here. So that's it. That's all I've got for you today. Uh, again, I'm going to be busy at least this week with day job stuff just so that I get past a certain point of where I need to be. And then hopefully because I'll be so organized and doing everything as it comes along and I won't have four weeks worth of expense reports to go through and I won't have four weeks worth of updates on Salesforce and four weeks of this, that, and the other thing, I'll be on top of everything so that even if there's a fire drill, I can be prepared for it like I usually am. Because I've just pretty much felt like I've been behind the eight ball since April when they, when they made the change. There you go. That's m m me in a nutshell and, and my setups and what's going on. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please leave them down below in the comment section. As always, thank you for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember kids, forward and up.